He was part of the 2004 and 2006 squad that played in Tunisia and Egypt, respectively. Afghan, of course. He is also our Highlanders and Platinum Stars. As a boy, I have to buy Jolie Pasha right here, right now on Living Legends, proudly brought to you by Proton Bakers from Maron Jera Pond on 250 grams, 500 grams, 1 kg, as well as 2 kg. And guess what? Kanoanzo Kanzara, you can always find them in any retail shop that is available near you tm okay and in richards marambore and thanks so much to indigo interior for these beautiful couches we are sitting on right now thank you so much and this beautiful dress i am in right now it's cecilia thank you thank you so much today i have dubai to all the highlanders fans yes i have a guy in the studio good to see you mr joe thank you so much dubai so actually that yeah. i okay so the can't do it my team is not good. I'm going to do it. 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 I'm just grateful for what uh, Zim Football has done for me. And it's not uh, every day that uh, you get that opportunity to play at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has been involved in my growth as a footballer, mm -hmm. uh, integrating myself into a coach now. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say to all the Zimbabwean uh, footballers, people that have been involved, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, the boy from uh, Kings and Queens. I understand that uh, you, you started your profession at Highlanders. How was it for you? Uh, it wasn't easy. It's been a very, very difficult uh, journey. You know, for one, to make it as a footballer, it takes a lot. Mm -hmm. So coming from Cholocho, mm -hmm. Uh, the rural areas, uh, it was going to be difficult because I came to Highlanders uh in 1997 mm -hmm. uh, having been seen by matinda and lofu and raman kumbu mm -hmm. when they were going to cholocho to sell uh, their cabbages there then they just happened to come and watch a uh, football match uh, by the uh, uh, the shopping center and they saw me and they invited me to come to to Blawayo. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went there, I trained for a week and I ran away because uh, the other senior players, they were giving me a stick, you know, saying, ah, this guy from Kumusha and stuff like that. So it, it became difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ran away, I went to join Zimbabwe Saints. <coughs> and I played there for, for three months. And uh, the manager then, Ernest Mapepe, he came back, he came to my dad and he spoke to my dad and said, no. Uh, we need the boy to come back to Islanders, and uh, that's when I went back. And uh, the rest, uh, you know, is who I am now. And mm -hmm. I'm just grateful also to Islanders for what they did for me as a footballer, as a father, uh, and now a coach. Everything uh, we give uh, credit to them. But it's been very, very difficult to play for Islanders uh, because. Those fans are not easy mm -hmm. uh, to to please. So for me, uh, the two years, two and a half years that I played, they, I'm just happy to say that uh, for all the games that I played, I think I, I gave my best. Mm -hmm. There's not even one game that I will say I was below par, and I was lucky uh, for that. And after that, that's when I, I went to Cyprus mm -hmm. uh, to play the, uh, for five years. And uh, I also had a very, very good career there. And uh, I'm sure now if you go to Cyprus, once you pu put out your passport, Zimbabwean passport, they will always ask you about myself and Zenzo Moyo. Mm -hmm. uh, we left a mark there. Uh, we legends there, <laughs> which is very, very good. It and uh, I'm happy. Uh, for my career as a footballer, I've got no regrets. Mm -hmm. um, having played in Cyprus for five years, I then started missing my mom mm. and because I had left uh, for, for Europe when I was very young. Mm -hmm. 
So I started missing my my family, my mom. Then I'd come back and play closer to home. That's when I joined Super Sport in, in South Africa and I played for two years before I moved to Platinum Stars mm -hmm. where I stayed for four years. How was it for you at Platinum Stars in Eze? No, it was beautiful. Uh, it's good sometimes to play for a coach who mm -hmm. believes in you. I was at Super Sport for, for two years and mm -hmm. Owen Takama came for me. Mm -hmm. uh, we, had to, we had to swap one of his best players, Kakleko mm Masheko -hmm. uh, then. Uh, the guy who went on to play for, for Mamelo Sundown. So he had to swap him for me. Mm -hmm. and he, he, so that made it easy for me because playing for a coach who needs you, who believes in you, it makes things easy. Mm -hmm. But I had a very, very good career. The, uh, everything was fine. Unfortunately, uh, you know, in football, sometimes uh, injuries can strike any time. So I broke my leg. Uh, whilst I was still enjoying my football. And I remember I'd uh, already uh, made a contact with Kaiser Chiefs. I was supposed to, to sign for them the following season. Yeah. So unfortunately in April I broke my leg and it was uh, the turn of mm -hmm. everything. Nice. Um, mm. So now I'm talking to uh, the tallest midfielder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dubai, do you have a greatest opponent that you fear the most during the days? Um, uh, for maybe in the national team, we had, uh, you know, when we played with so many, many great players, uh, mm -hmm. I was lucky also to have played with those big, uh, big uh, players that I see some of them now doing well as coaches. Uh, some of them are uh, being legends. Uh, I, I think uh, Rico Petsong mm -hmm. for Cameroon was the <laughs> most difficult defender for me because I remember that, that guy was very rough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was very. He was a very, very difficult defender. And locally, I will say, James Matola for me was difficult. Mm -hmm. Whether at club level or national team, a training, mm -hmm. how that guy will always stick to you. You, you won't even do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I used to speed during my playing days, but yet this timing that you couldn't even leave him behind. Mm -hmm. Every time I try to do my tricks, you always be there. <laughs> So, yeah, that was the most difficult defender for me locally. And like I said, when we were playing in the national team, mm -hmm. Rico song for me was also Nice, nice. I have the most calmest and tallest mm -hmm. midfielder from the dream team, Joel Pasha Dubai, right here on Living Legends. Do not go away because we'll be right back after this show break. The second segment of Living Legends, and thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy yourselves as much as I'm doing, Hansi. But I said, I have a little quick gray, my legends, which are proudly brought to you by Proton Bakers from Marundi. Uh, their biscuits are found on 250 grams, 700 grams, 1 kg as well as 2 kg. And yes, I have Dubai Jolu Pasha in the studio with me. Uh, let's talk about uh, your coaching career. I understand uh, that uh, you, know, you led uh, Tawan into the league and you resigned after that. How did you? do that and why did you resign early um i i joined tel one uh, 2018 mm -hmm. when they were still in division one mm -hmm. uh we had to construct a new team because when i arrived the uh, most players they left maybe they didn't see the vision that was there for the club mm -hmm. uh, so they left for other clubs mm -hmm. but uh we managed to, to <coughs> to have a good team uh, that went on to win the league mm -hmm. uh, for, for Central Region mm -hmm. in our first season. And then we got promoted into the PSL. And uh, the problem that we, we faced was that uh, 
I am yet to uh, to get my my CAF A coaching pages at the moment. Uh, so PSL they require you to have a CAF A coaching page, and mm -hmm. uh, we try to to get exemption. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to use that. Uh, I've played for for the national team. I I've served my country. Uh, any time when I was needed, I was always the I gave my best. So we try to get the exemption, but also I understand the uh, the leaders of, of the football here in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. uh, they have got their own reasons, and they felt it was not the time for them to exempt me. Mm -hmm. So it became difficult for me to lead the team in the PSL, though we had an, an arrangement that uh, I'll be training the team mm -hmm. on a, a daily basis. Mm. and then we'll bring somebody else that will help us with the CAF A page so that we are allowed also to, to do what we do best. Mm. Uh, and it's always difficult. Uh, we try to bring uh, my elder, Mr. Jairo Stapira, mm. very good man. Yeah, he tried to help us uh, a lot, but uh, obviously the things uh, didn't go well. Mm. And uh, in the end, uh, the club decided to bring uh, my father in football, Raman Kumbu, mm. into the fold. And it was going well. And I think uh, everybody uh, they appreciated what we were trying to do. The Telwan is a team. Uh, I, I felt that we were playing very, very good football. Mm. Uh, but in the end, the team got relegated uh, on the last day. Mm. So they decided that the team will go back to Central Region Division 1 to go and try again to come back. But uh, the reason why I left uh, was because I felt that if the team was going to Division 1, mm -hmm. uh, it was going to be difficult for me to be an assistant coach because it is a league that I had won previously. So I didn't see myself going back there as an assistant coach in a league that I had won. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted, you know, uh, a different path. Mm -hmm. That's why I had to ask from, from my bosses uh, that uh, I know I, I, I'm a tell one <coughs> a son. I tell one has always been uh, developed as a family team. So mm -hmm. I had to ask them maybe if I can, you know, find some way where I can still uh, practice as a head coach mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad that I got an opportunity from uh, Golden Eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, they called me uh, for a meeting. I, I came, we sat down, I wanted to understand uh, where we wanted to, you know, to take their team from where it is to where we to want where? it to be. Yeah, and the approach it really, really was exciting for me, and mm -hmm. also being owned by young, young uh, guys who understands football, and I felt that they understood myself, my philosophy. So I made that decision to to leave Tel One. Not that I left uh, in bad taste. No, mm -hmm. I asked uh, from my bosses that if they could, you know, give me that opportunity to, to try something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I left on good terms. We still on good terms w with everybody there. Mm -hmm. We talk, uh, we help each other, and yeah, football is like that. You, when another door is shut, another one is, is opening. Open. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because this is what has always been uh, my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So we talk about now. You, um, it's when you left for Golden. Um, it is. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Um. It's a very, very exciting project for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not going to elaborate much mm -hmm. about, uh, about that because uh, at the moment, uh, there are other things that are still being, you know, in progress. out, yeah, that are in progress. But mm -hmm. it's a very, very exciting uh, team that I think in the next uh, coming years, people will be talking about it. And I know uh, we're talking today but uh, somebody that's watching now, they'll okay. be talking about this team. All right. So, yeah. um, I, I, so, so, so <coughs> I have mm -hmm. the directors on my neck now. Yeah. Yes, I have uh, Joel Pahle, righty on Living Legends. Stay with us.
the last and final segment of Living Legends. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying this conversation we ha we're having right now with our all time tallest midfielder, Dubai Joe Lupasha, proudly brought to you by Proton Bakers from Arondera. And of course, thank you so much in to Indy Gwintira for those beautiful couches we're sitting on right there. You know, I've just <laughs> laughing at that game again. <laughs> you know, I actually never uh, from that time up to here. I, I said, I don't. I can go one of those guys. I have to laugh with him. <laughs> How was that game for you, anyway? Uh, you know, the build up to that match was was for for us because mm -hmm. I think I I was still young mm -hmm. and most of the players they were still young. Uh, we were looking up to to the guys like uh, our influential captain Peter Love, who mm -hmm. had uh, been gay twins, Ach and Sao. Those are the guys that we're looking up to. But uh, the thing is, uh, we were supposed to be playing in the starting 11. Uh, I remember myself, Tinashe uh, Ngomashi, Esrom Yeah. Yeah, so it, it was really, really something that was, you know, it was worrisome, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm going to play in <laughs> some of these guys that we look up to, they, they, they are on the bench. But uh, mm -hmm. because we had lost to Egypt to one the, the first game, so uh, Morphe had to change the team. Cause mm -hmm. the, the first game I was on the bench, the mm -hmm. second game I had to start. And coming into that match, you know, is an unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, it was an advantage, especially for me, it was an advantage because nobody knew about me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think for me, that was one of my best games that I played for the national team because I won Wagamai. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Rico Pet was saying to Peter, Peter, who is this who is this skinny boy? He's, he's becoming a nuisance. Uh, the next the next the next ball that's coming, I'm going to sit on his neck. And he did that. When, when it came uh, oh, uh, that was that day <laughs> but, was uh, but anyway that's uh, that's uh, the profession for you. Yeah. All right, so mm. we, we come back to you as is a legend who's mm, has been there during the old times and still now coaching. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, football in Zimbabwe is not the same anymore. We talk of uh, the Fabish times and the current times. What do you think must be done in terms of improving uh, the football industry? Uh, I think uh, what I will just say now is uh, we I think we need to appeal to to our sports minister uh, for development because now the development is no longer there. We need to develop football at grassroots. We need to develop football at schools. We need a lot of help, a, a lot of help. And I'm thinking that uh, what needs to be done is you know to put the people that have got knowledge yeah, into these structures of development. But now the problem is. In development, the, there is nothing, you know, there is no money mm -hmm. uh, for these guys that will be doing the development. Mm -hmm. That's why all these people that have got knowledge about football, they want to coach in the PSL teams because they can get something. But if money can be channeled into development to pay those people, I think our football can improve. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so uh, I just, just a general question, would you miss the most and would you say you are my greatest partner in the game? Um, I will say Ronald Kitiza Spand uh, because we come from the same area in mm -hmm. Europe and me and him we didn't have to talk, I didn't have to call for the football, it was just eye contact and boom mm -hmm. it will be put into space and so that's one person I will say I, I miss uh, the most playing with him but uh, the good thing is we play together in the, in the social uh, league so we still have got uh, those those moments mm -hmm. even though we're playing in the social leagues mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all right uh, so um yeah, as the uh, coach who's uh, training now i understand that um we got events for our, our national team what yes. what do you what advice would you give uh, to our current coach in terms of our, our national team no to the new coach i'll just say uh, it is good that uh, he, he understands uh, the culture of of our football and also he needs to 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 you know to to surround himself with good people that are going to help him mm -hmm. with the knowledge of our, our, our footballers our current footballers that are playing now mm -hmm. so that uh, because we've got no time next month we, we are playing maybe i think this is algeria mm -hmm. so we will need a lot a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. given to him and 
positive knowledge given mm -hmm. to him. That, that's all that I can any, say. Any formation advice? Like you say, I put this person on this, put me up. Nah, it's difficult to say. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a coach. He's coming in with his uh, own philosophy. Mm -hmm. But uh, what is Zimbabwe without uh, knowledge and karma? Without and karma. Mm -hmm. It can never be a national team, current national team. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the big points of mm -hmm. the team that will, will make... Uh, the team maybe this is a jerry mm -hmm. yeah. all right so um just a quick one um uh, what would you want to say to the rest of the zimbabweans who loved and still love joe lupasha any parting ways to them uh i'll just say to them continue loving me mm -hmm. i i appreciate the love that i get on the streets wherever i uh, i'm walking around mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether I, i'm in harare or mtoko anyway mm -hmm. um i'm just appreciated and i appreciate that i'm appreciated thank <laughs> nice. you so much all right so, so do by which team do you support uh i mean not locally of course the PSO. oh i'm a main united fan i uh, know i'm yeah. a liverpool fan um should i give you the sample or not because i, Ish, <laughs> I will bounce back <laughs> <laughs> no you have to come in jail now. so of course every legend must be a liverpool fan all right but thank you so much for coming through this is from Porton. they say i'm going to give our legends uh, Joel Pasha, this fan on which I should coach and I got you, Buru, Madame Bonomazi. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you so much to Proton. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you so much for coming. That was Dubai, Joel Pasha, right here, right now on Living Legends. To all the football fans, of course, I brought you your legend. In the other way, but do not display because next week I'm back again, same time, same place. So if you have views and comments, or you think you're Living Legends, do not hesitate and do not even why. Feel free to contact us on the number that is appearing on our screen right now. So from myself, Maslin, we call Bonda Makara, our proud uh, uh, sponsors, Proton Bakers from Marondera, and of course, the beautiful couches from Indigo Interior. And see, thank you so much for this beautiful dress I am in right now. The technical crew that has been running around to make sure this show comes out well. See you next week. Show my boy.